Math 2312, Chapter 1, Functions, Section 1, Functions and Function Notation, Video 5, Evaluating a Function from its Graph. In the previous video, I showed you a very, dare I say, elementary approach to graphing functions by manufacturing several ordered pairs, plotting them on a coordinate plane, and then finding the graph by connecting the dots smoothly and continuously as necessary. But what if you already have the graph? Well, whatever we do forwards, we can usually do backwards. Forwards, we start with a function, put values in to get values out to create dots to draw a graph. So what could we do if we already have the graph? Well, if we went backwards from the graph, we could pull out a dot and could we use that to answer some function questions. On the board, you see a uh, not smooth graph. It's continuous in the sense that it's not broken. You can draw it from left to right without picking up your writing utensil, but it would not be called smooth because it has these three corners. A correct way to describe it would be piecewise smooth. This piece is smooth, so is that piece, that piece, and that piece, but collectively it has three corners and it's not smooth at those corners. In calculus, you'll talk about a more rigorous definition of what it means to be smooth and not smooth, but for now, let's just say it means it has corners. Now this graph does go through some certain points that I've already labeled. Negative 2, 0 is an x-intercept, 0, 3 is a y-intercept, the point 1, 2 in quadrant 1, the point 2, 3 also in quadrant 1, and we have a second x-intercept over here at 3, 0. From this graph, I could ask you several questions. Assuming that this is the graph of y equals some function of x, without telling you what that function is, I could ask you, what is f of 1? Now, there's only one word pair on this graph involving the number 1, so you may, your eyes may have gone right there and said, I know what the answer is, but let's think about what this is asking us and what we're given. This is asking us, what is the output when the input is 1? Under the convention that the input is the x and the output is the y, we're basically being told half of an ordered pair. We're being told when we put in 1, we want to know what comes out. So our evidence has to be of this form, and then we go to the graph. What we know is that we're supposed to go over 1. Then we find a point above or below where I'm standing. That would be this point. That means that 2 is the output when 1 is the input. Since, F of, since uh, excuse me, 1 comma 2 is on the graph, comma, f of 1 is equal to 2. And I could do it for any of these. I could ask you what is f of 2. Well, I'm asking you which ordered pair has an x of 2. Go find its y. Here it is. Because the point 2 comma 3 is on the graph, we know that f of 2 is equal to 3. So we can actually evaluate a function based on its graph alone by knowing that each ordered pair represents an input paired with its output. By asking us to evaluate a function, we're being told what input to look for. We find the point with the correct input. The y-coordinate is its output. But we can go even further than this. We can not only use a graph to evaluate a function, we can use a graph, let me rephrase that. We can not only use the graph to find the output for a given input, we can use the graph to find inputs for a given output. In other words, instead of finding the missing x, we can find the missing y. For example, I could ask you to solve f of x is equal to 0. Think about what this means in terms of ordered pairs, x's, and y's. When you evaluate a function in the context of x's and y's, the input is the x and the output is the y. Since we were told the output, we're being told the second coordinate, the y coordinate of the ordered pair. And since we're being asked for the input, we don't know the first coordinate. But we know that we want to find a point that looks like this. Do you see one? Do you see more than one? I do. The point 3, 0 has the structure that we're looking for. It has the correct output, but so does the point negative 2, 0. 
since negative two zero and three comma zero are on the graph, the solutions to f of x equals zero are x equals negative two and x equals three. And if there were another x-intercept, that would be a solution as well. Now, if you were looking at this point, here's where you have to be very careful. This point does have a zero, but it's the x. And in function notation, that's the input. But the zero here is the output. What question could this answer? Well, it could answer what is f, what is f of zero. Or it could answer solve f of x equals three. In fact, this equation would have two solutions because we're looking for an ordered pair that has three as the y. Clearly, this is one, so x could be zero, but so is this one. One last thought on this particular problem. How many solutions does f of x equal 2 have. Now this one's a little tricky. I'm not asking what the solutions are, I'm asking how many solutions it has. In terms of ordered pairs, this is like asking how many ordered pairs, how many ordered pairs are of the form Something, and I guess I can call that something x, because that's what the input currently is, comma 2. And if you're thinking 1, well, mm -hmm. here's 1, but what if I told you there were more? They're just not labeled. All I'm looking for is a point on the graph that's up 2, because its y coordinate is 2. This is not the only one up 2. There's one over here as well. What's the x? Don't know. Could we find it? Well, assuming this is a line, actually, yes, we could. So there's another point where the y-coordinate is 2, and therefore another solution to this equation. But there's another to the left. So there's actually three points on this graph where the output is 2, three different points, which means there's three solutions to the equation f of x equals 2. Just a challenging thought for you to think about. There are actually values I could put here instead of 2, where the, the equation would have four solutions. I challenge you to think about an output on this graph that would actually have four solutions for the input.